Welcome to the Gospel of Luke. We're at Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 36. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James and went up in, on the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Then it happened, as they were parting from him, that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. When the voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone, but they kept quiet and told no one in those days any of the things they had seen. Peter's quick, isn't he? Usually the first guy off the line. He's always got something to say real quick. Jesus takes them up into the mountain. He told them yesterday morning in our devotional, and many of some of you here will not taste of death till you see the kingdom of God. Jesus now takes them up into the mountain. There's going to be a vision here. They're going to see, not just really even a vision, but they're going to see Moses and Elijah, the real guys. These are them. So they see it, and Peter says, hey, let's make three tabernacles. You know, those are three personages that are pretty highly revered in the faith, aren't they? Moses, yeah, Moses, Elijah, and of course, Jesus then, but God the Father. And he says, this is my beloved son. He puts the full focus 100% onto Jesus. And when they look again, what do they see? They see only Jesus. And so here we see the problem the problem that Peter Peter is putting Jesus in, in, in a parallel with, with Elijah and Moses. Well, Elijah and Moses and Jesus are not on the same parallel. Jesus is the infinite God come in human flesh. Elijah and Moses, uh, remarkable as they were, very remarkable, but they're create creatures. They're created beings. They're created persons. Jesus is God. God come in human flesh. The, 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 the difference is enormous. And so the focus here is on Jesus. Yes, he's connected. He's in he's in connection with what God did through Moses and with what God did through Elijah. But Jesus is a whole nother level. Jesus is God himself come and Jesus will make, make the sacrifice. Jesus' blood will be shed on the cross. Jesus will be our sacrifice. Moses and Elijah, uh, although, you know, they, they live for God, but they didn't die on a cross to pay the penalty for yours and my life. They, are, they were mere creatures. Their life does not measure with the life of God. Their life could not atone for your life and mine. Jesus' life can and does. Praise his name. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you that Jesus was willing to go on to the cross, although he was so mistreated and misunderstood. Even his own workers had trouble understanding him at different times. There's so many things that rise up in us, Lord, that, that are our own messed up stuff that keep us from understanding your purpose. But may, may we let you intervene and take that away and show us the path, the path you have for us as we serve Jesus. Thank you for Jesus, who did was so much more than just even Moses, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All friend, the Lord is on our side. We could can't do any better than that. And when we look and see, let's not make tabernacles for three, but let's see Jesus only. That's where the focus is to be. May his blessing be with you today.